Hi, I'm Joe James, and in this video in our geometry series, we're going to cover 3D solids. These are the four 3D solids we're going to cover. We're, talking, we're going to talk about pyramids, cylinders, cones, and prisms. And you can see that cylinders and cones are both circular in shape, round or oval, and pyramids and prisms both have a polygon-shaped base. And another thing you'll notice is that uh, both pyramids and cones come to a point, and both cylinders and prisms have two bases, a lower base and an upper base, that are parallel. So let's talk about cylinders. The two bases of a cylinder are parallel, and therefore they are the same size. The area of each base is pi r squared, that's just the area of a circle. And the circumference of each base is 2 pi r, which is the circumference of a circle. The axis of a cylinder is the center rod. If you can imagine the very center of the cylinder, a line going straight up the middle of it. And then we also have a height for the cylinder and a radius. So two different types of cylinders here. One is a square or right cylinder and its axis is perpendicular to both bases. So this red axis, the center line, is gonna be perpendicular to both of the bases. An oblique cylinder, looks kind of a lazy, leaning, slanted cylinder, whatever you wanna call it, the axis is not perpendicular to both bases. It joins the bases at a different angle. The lateral area of a 3D solid is the area excluding the bases. So here on a prism, we have two different types. We have a rectangular base or a triangular base. Uh, but on a prism, the lateral area is the area of the white sides here, not the top surface or the bottom surface, the top base or the bottom base. So the surface area of the four sides added together in this case. And the way we calculate that is by calculating the circumference of the base times the height. So the circumference of the base is we have a length, a width, and a height here, or the three dimensions of this cube. The lateral area is 2L plus 2W times height. Why is that? Well, let's see. The circumference of the base is L here, W, and then L on this side, and then W on this side. So it's two L's and two W's is the circumference of this base rectangle. And then we multiply by the height. So it's circumference times height. And the same thing for a triangular base. The circumference of this triangular base is side one plus side two plus side three. We add all those together and we multiply it by the height. So it's not that complicated. Circumference of the base times the height gives you the lateral area, which is the area of the vertical sides. And for a cylinder, the, uh, a right cylinder that is, not the lazy leaning cylinder, the lateral area for a right cylinder is the circumference of the base times the height. And we know the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. We multiply that by h. That gives us the lateral area. So specifically for right cylinders, the volume is pi r squared h. And that's basically the formula pi r squared for the area of the base multiplied by the height. And the surface area is this lateral area plus the area of the two bases, right? The two bases are, each base, the area is pi r squared. And so we have two bases, so we multiply that by two. So two pi r squared gives us the area of the two bases together plus the lateral area, which we just covered on the previous slide. So that gives us the outer surface area for the entire outside surface area of this uh, right cylinder. Let's do a practice problem here. This is, I'll warn you, this is gonna be a little bit hard, but this is a real application of what you would use 3D solids and volume of a cylinder for. So water flows through a pipe that is four inches in diameter. Well, that's, instantly we should be thinking, well, radius is what we're usually gonna use for all these formulas. That's gonna be two inches radius. Um, at a speed of 60 feet per minute, how long does it take to fill a 10,000 cubic inch tank? Hmm, 60 feet per minute. So uh, we probably want to get this in seconds, actually. So if we divide this by seconds, 
Well, first of all, radius, we divide that by two and we get two inches radius. Uh, and then we know our area, our formula for volume is pi r squared h. But what is h, right? What is h? We need to somehow break this 60 feet per minute down to a right cylinder with a, a defined height so that we can calculate the volume of it. And then we can figure out how much of that volume is flowing per second. So at 60 feet per minute, that's one foot per second or 12 inches per second. So if we just take a snapshot of the flow of liquid through this pipe, let's say in one second, what, what is instantaneously, what is the volume of this pipe? Well, 12 inches of water with a two inch radius, we can calculate that. And then we can say there's 12 inches flowing every second. So let's do that. The volume of the cylinder that's 12 inches long is pi r squared h, or pi 2 squared times 12, equals pi times 4 times 12, or 48 pi. I just estimated pi 3.14, and it comes out, I rounded it off, 151 cubic inches per second. So that means there's this volume of liquid flowing, right, one foot per second is 151 cubic inches of water. Now we just need to figure out, well, how, how many seconds is it going to take to fill up a 10,000 cubic inch tank? So 10,000 divided by 151. And I like to structure my uh, formulas like this. I like to look at it like the equation 151 cubic inches over one second equals 10,000 cubic inches over n seconds. And that's what we're trying to find here is n. So we have seconds on the bottom and we have cubic inches on the top. And then I cross multiply and divide. And this, this helps me keep things straight. So 10,000 cubic inches times one divided by 151. It gives me n. So I cross multiply and divide. And when I do that, we get 66 seconds. I just rounded it off again. I'm not looking at decimal places. So roughly a little over a minute, a minute and six seconds to fill up this 10,000 cubic inch tank. So not that hard to figure out, but that's a kind of a real application for volume of a cylinder. Now let's look at cubes and rectangular prisms. So a cube is actually a square prism that has all four sides equal, but rectangular prisms don't necessarily have all four sides equal. They may have three different side lengths, X, Y, and Z. Um, so we have a 2D, 2D diagonal, which means that it's on one face only. And you can see this red line, it's, it's just on one face. It doesn't pass through the inside of the cube. So if we want to find the length of that, well, that's, that's just um, basically x squared plus y squared, square root, that's the Pythagorean theorem. We have x, we have y, and then we have we're trying to find out the distance, uh, this hypotenuse. So that's a simple application of the Pythagorean theorem to get that. This is a right triangle. So that's a 2D diagonal, but we could also have a 3D diagonal that passes through the center of the cube, right? And in this case, we have to use all three sides, x, y, and z, and we just square them all and take the square root of that. And then we can find the length of this cube, the length of this diagonal through the middle of the cube. Uh, so let's talk about the volume of a cube. This is just the product of length, width, and height, or x, y, and z coordinates. So um, that's just a simple multiplication of those three, three values. The surface area is uh, each pair of opposite sides is congruent. So we take two times LW, WH, plus LH, right? Why is that? Well, surface area. So L times W gives us this gray area, the area of this gray base. And then the upper base is also L times W. So we take two times LW to get the top and bottom bases. And then let's say this front right base here, W times H. And then the back left base is going to be W times H. So we need two WH sides, right? So this is a six-sided cube, and we're just calculating the area of each side by multiplying its x and y coordinates. And then we're, uh, we're adding all, all six of those sides together. 
and they're pairs because opposite sides are exactly the same. So that gives us the surface area of a rectangular prism. And we have LW and H, we assume that it's rectangular, so all three of those could be different lengths, but it's, if it's an actual cube, then it's a lot simpler. It's just six times L squared, right? One side squared. Again, these come to a vertex at the point here. Uh, we can find the, the volume of a pyramid. It's, it's a function of the base area and the height. So B is the base area and H is the height, and then we divide by three. So the base area, again, a pyramid volume, a pyramid can have any type of polygon base. So I didn't, you can't put a specific formula for all pyramids because you could have a square base, you could have a rectangular base, you could have an octagonal shaped base. The base could be any polygon shape, but you have to calculate the area of the base in order to get the volume of the pyramid. The area of the base times the height of the pyramid divided by three. And then a cone volume is, again, the base area times the height divided by three. And usually the base area, if it's, if it's a round base, it's gonna be um, pi r squared is the area of the circle. A sphere, you can think of a marble or a globe or whatever you wanna, any round three-dimensional object on uh, the Earth. All points in space that are equidistant from the center point. So a hollow sphere, basically. Now the volume of the sphere, how much water could this, could this sphere hold? Well, we only have one measure, and that's the radius of the sphere, from the very center of the sphere to the outer edge of it. So the volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Uh, there's no way to derive that or ration it out because it's a little complicated, So, but uh, you just have to memorize it. And the surface area is 4 pi r squared. 4 pi r squared surface area. So if you want to calculate the volume or surface area of a, of a sphere, we'll use these two formulas. Let's do a practice problem. Given a sphere with height 10, find its volume and surface area. Geez, how hard can this be, right? So we need the radius. We're given the height of the sphere. Well, gee, this height of the sphere is going to be two times the radius, right? The radius would be from the center to one of the outer edges is going to be five. So radius, the first thing we do is divide 10 by two and we get five for the radius. Now we just apply these formulas and plug in our five. That's pretty easy. We multiply it out. The volume is four thirds pi r cubed. And then when we plug in our five, we get uh, four thirds pi times 125, which is 500 over three pi. So we're gonna give our answer for volume in terms of pi. And the same for surface area. We'll give our answer for the surface area in terms of pi. We don't need to necessarily multiply it out. Um, four pi r squared. And we plug in our five, so we get 100 pi for the surface area. Not too complicated. To do these calculations. The only trick is memorizing these formulas. That concludes my video on 3D solids. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please click the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.